Hello there, everybody. My name is Jacob, and I'm good with my good friend, uh, Justin. Say hello. Hello, it's your boy. What's up? And uh, it's been a while, it, it, and we're not doing really a review of anything. Uh, not instead, this time, no. we're just going to talk about uh, both what's been going on in the world of both wrestling and tokusatsu for the past, I would say, few, like, month and a half or so. Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah. So, uh, firstly, let's talk about probably the biggest thing in this uh, uh, that happened within the past month or so is the debuts that's been happening with AEW. So, All Out was a roller coaster. Oh, yeah. So, well, firstly, we got to talk about, like, the thing that happened before All Out. Uh, because uh, that's on. Right. CM yeah. Punk debuted before All Out. Yes. For those who. Everyone all... else debuted at the end of All Out. Yeah, for those who don't know, this is this is definitely like old news because we really don't care. It's old news. Yeah, but uh, about three weeks before uh, all that was set to you, Ao, CM Punk made his return to wrestling, uh, being a member of AEW. He came out in his hometown of Chicago, an episode yes. of Rampage, which is like the version of SmackDown, um, yeah. and. So he came in, cut a promo, said, Dolby Allen, I want to challenge you for a match. Because he said Dolby Allen is the wrestler that if he was 15 today, he would love. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, it, it was fucking awesome. Okay, so, so CM Punk is like in his 40s, right? I think so. He's in his 40s. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Let me double check. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's if if he's that old. He's been wrestling since at least two thousand and one. So, like with with him and Darby, it's it's a respect thing, right? Like he's he's fighting. Yeah, it, it's more so like he wants to see if I think he in the lead up of it he said in a promo that it's not so much if Darby Allen can hang with. Uh, CM Punk, it's more so with can CM Punk hang with Dolby Allen. Mm. Which I feel like is a way to properly build up a returning legend while also building a younger talent that hasn't had that much exposure in a, in a more mainstream sense, that is. I mean, like, the other thing is that Darby Allen already has a legend attached to him. That is true. He has Sting. So... So how does Sting feel about this? I think Sting is just more so to kind of give him the rub. I think Sting is just there for the ride because he 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 just really accompanies Dolby. He doesn't he gets physical sometimes, but it's mostly just like to prevent interference or I mean, cheating like and whatnot. I feel like that's what his body can do right now. So. Yeah, no, he can do legitimate bumps. There was that one time he got power bombed by Brian Cage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, and, like, he has done tag matches and cinematic matches, but I think it's really just, he wants to, it's just kind of a, a manager type thing, which is fine. I think it's fine. That's perfectly fine, honestly, and, uh, you know. We get to see I, Sting I can, every week, so that's a highlight. Yes, I can imagine that CM Punk versus Darby Allen was a very technical, beautiful match. It was. Of, it was. It was very proportion. slow. It was different from like everything else on the card because uh, that was. It was a. It was a. It all kind of built up to the ending, which I feel like how uh, like a really good match should be, and it was. Um, I would say give it a watch. Give the entire card a watch if you haven't already, since that's probably the show of the year. I would say. Or well, definitely AEW's best show, because the tag match with Lucha Bros and um, Young Bucks was amazing. You also had the, um, the what was it, yeah, Statlando versus uh, Britt Baker, which was pretty good, you know? Yeah, some, some of these matches aren't exactly necessary, but, you yeah. know. Uh, you also had, um, what else did you have? Um, oh, Eddie Kingston versus Miro. <laughs> that was... That was pretty good. I like that. Um, and then, of course, you had a main event, uh, K, uh, Christian Keys versus uh, Kenny Omega, which is which was 
I don't mean, like, it was a good match, but the thing is, when I, I don't usually watch, like, wrestling pay-per-views more than once, unless I'm, like, revisiting them. So, yeah. I was really fucking tired by the end of the pay-per-view, so I kind that's, of... That's kind of the thing with some, like, great pay-per-views, is, like, once they really get too much greatness in one night, it's like, okay, you have cause you, you calm down. Yeah, like, um, I loved the show, but the thing is, is that... It aired on, I believe, on a sun, like a Sunday, and it was going till twelve, and like I gotta sleep for school. It's like, geez, <laughs> man. Um, um, a question with with uh, Miro, like, has he mentioned anything about Lana yes. coming to AEW? Oh no, not to uh, not to AEW, but he always kind of forced. He always like forced to win promos. But he never actually, like, says, my wife is going to come to AEW. I don't I mean, know like, if her 30-day contract has expired yet, though. Not 30-day, uh, yes. 90-day, not complete. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. But, I mean, where where else is she going to go? She, her husband works here. Impact. Just go there. It, it could always be Impact. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so... You know, like, like Impact always feels like a, a big federation but they also have a very small show yeah like, no they'll they're smaller than what they once was i think the fact because they don't they're not they don't air on national tv they do those shows on youtube not really they're on access yeah yeah but that's a paid channel and even then i don't see many people talk about access i think the only reason they even have that is because the um the parent company i think anthem i believe they own access mm. yeah which is why new japan was kicked off of programming there Lame. um uh by the way speaking of impact i'm actually wearing one of their shorts uh today because uh, uh it's uh, caleb with a k he's uh oh, yes oh uh, he, yeah i saw him during that during one match that i watched yeah on yeah Thursday. Uh, because i got a um you know those like what's it called you know like those loot crate things um, so one of the wrestling. Yeah, I got a, a high spots crate, and it came with this short and a uh, a Ron Simmons autograph, uh, oh. two DVDs, a Degeneration X uh, necklace, a Brian Myers figure, and a trading code of uh, I believe whoever uh, Jerry Lawler's mentor was in Memphis. Oh. So actually, it was, always, it was a really good box. Like, I used to get loot crate back in the day but uh you know you know the thing is that loot crate is is the one that didn't specifically cater to one thing so like yeah. you just got a regular loot crate you got a bunch of random shit later so, later in loot crate's life it they would do like the different specific ones yeah, like i know they had a they had wwe they had uh tmnt i believe uh, I think they had like whole boxes, that stuff, which I think is I think th specifically th uh, themed ones are a lot better than just generic pop culture ones, because pop culture could basically mean anything that's been popular in the last twenty, yeah. thirty years. Well, like they they had a, a loose theme to them, like every box had something to do with it. Yeah. But you know, it's like anything can be anything but I've, I've always wanted to try like one of the more specific ones yeah uh i would say go with like i know pro wrestling tees has one i got mine from high spots because they're based out where i live they're like 40 minutes away from my house actually mm -hmm. um so i got that and um and i think there's maybe one other one i think it's just called pro wrestling crate or something all right so if we get back to the main event we yeah, have some some entrances. To yes, talk about. so, well, so what happened is after the match, the elite comes down. They cut the promo, say they are the best. Kenny Omega is the best, you know. And he says, you know why? Well, you know why Christian Cage couldn't beat me because everyone else I've had already beaten. They don't walk here or they're already dead. And then the lights cut out, and okay, Adam Cole okay, okay. debuts. Okay, they're already dead. Um, it's a little. It's a little awkward, isn't it? Um, well, the thing is that uh, the it makes sense if you watched Being the Elite around the time Adam Cole was in AEW. Not not Adam Cole was in uh, was going to come to uh, WWE, in which when he was leaving Ring of Honor and going to NXT, uh, they killed his character off, and it was kind of a in joke that Adam Cole was dead. So. Yeah. 
what happened was they were, so I guess that was the little reference to it because I know BTE is canon to AEW. Hmm. And so anyway, Adam Cole shows up. Adam, and you think he's supposed to be a face? You think he's gonna face off of uh, Kenny Omega? Because obviously they killed him. <laughs> they killed him in mm -hmm. AEW and uh, in in BTE. But then but he's, no. he super kicks Jungle Boy, who came out to try to save Christian Cage after the post match beatdown, and uh, he super kicks Jungle Boy and starts laughing. And then Kenny Omega's like, You really think this man was gonna taunt on me? He's been my friend for nine years. And you then killed him. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that was that's that's like my one problem with it. Like you would I mean, if you do count BTE as canon, then yeah, it's it's dumb. Because like it doesn't make much sense. But if you don't count it as canon, then it makes a lot more sense. That, but then why did he say that they're the already dead line unless he was just trying to afford to somebody else? But then, but then, Kenny Omega says, well, without further ado, I'm going to send the crowd home happy. And with that being said, good night. And good, what was it? It was good, what was it? Good day and good night. I think it, that's Kenny Omega's catchphrase. Maybe I forgot. I, it's been so long since I watched that clip. But anyways, he says his ending catchphrase that he did in New Japan a lot, and then mm -hmm. "Flight of the Valkyries" can be heard, and Ooh. Brian fucking Danielson debuts. It's Daniel Bryan. Well, not exact. It's Brian Danielson. God damn it! <laughs> he's gonna kick your uh. fucking head in, which is what the crowd chanted as soon as they as soon as they heard it. <laughs> Didn't they just have a match? Like a week ago, uh, eight, um, Omega and uh, and Brand uh, Danielson. Yeah, they did. They wrestled at Grand Slam, which was their show at Alto Ash Stadium, and they and did, did to a win? time limit draw, oh, which, okay, which sounds bullshit. But the thing is, is that from what I've heard, the match was really good, and I'm sure they're it was. probably like... gonna set up a rematch, and this is to kind of help build Brian like Can... face. Kenny Omega lose already? That'd be great. Well, he did lose the Impact Championship. He, I think, he lost the Triple A Championship to Andrade. Well, he might still have it, but he's probably not gonna be because AEW doesn't like AEW's World Championship uh, reigns. Usually, it's just like six or seven months. I think we're newing about a full year as Kenny Omega's champion. Because he yeah, won the I, belt I, in I, December from John no, Moxley, when no, Moxley won it in January of 2020. I don't hate Kenny Omega. I just want something else. I think full gear. Uh, no, I think what they're doing is they're waiting for Adam Page to come back, because Adam Page had to leave because his wife is pregnant, and he has to take some time off to, you know, care for her. So... Ah, okay. So it's he, likely isn't he doing the dark order thing or something. He is kind of. He's uh he his last appear. What happened was um at fight for the fallen, he teamed up with the dark order to against the elite to try to get him a world title match and also try to have the uh, dark order get a, ta a, a tag team title match. But what happened was uh the elites uh, won that match, and uh Adam Page the next night on uh, next dynamite. He came to the Dalk Order and said, I'm sorry, guys, I keep screwing up. I have to leave. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of his thing for leaving for I mean, a bit. like, the, the Dark Order just kind of exists. And it's like, okay, you know, you guys are doing this whole cult thing, and we're just cool with that and stuff. I think um, when, when Adam Page returns, they're going to be, like, a huge fucking force. Um, but I mean, you know, uh, so, but anyways, that happened. Also, speaking of which, the Arthur Ashe Stadium show, that was fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, I didn't watch it, but apparently Homicide, uh, made an appeal and set them in the main event. Homicide? Homicide from, uh, he's a former Wing of Honor World Champion, member of LAX, he teamed with Hernan 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 Hernandez and TNA. Mm. Very famous for his, he also... He forked Colt, Colt Cabana at one point because there was this pretty infamous clip 
in Ring of Honor, where he starts attacking Colt Cabana with a fucking fork. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, but that's AEW, which is... Fuck, man. AEW has been probably the best. It's the only promotion, like, I actively try to watch every night. Because it's so fucking good. Because, honestly, like, I don't think I watched the past two WWE pay-per-views. I didn't watch Extreme Rules. I didn't watch, um... Fuck. So, no, I did watch SummerSlam. I, I thought Hell in a Cell was... Uh, the like a pay per view after that, but no. Um, Isn't it on a sell later in the year? Yeah, I think it might be October. I think. Let's no, see. We're on the way to we're on the way to Crown Jewel right now. Oh, uh, I'm not fucking excited about that. No one is. Oh, fuck it. Uh, you can book Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Raids, but it's not gonna be good. Uh. Oh no, Hell in a Cell was actually in June. What the fuck? I forgot about that. That's right. That's right. It had Bobby Lashley on it. On it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. That right. was a pay per view I didn't watch though, because usually I at least try to watch the pay per views, but I, I always like did watch that. Yeah, but fuck, I did not watch that. Yeah. Now get into Extreme Rules. Okay, so you 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 have to talk about this because I only watched the recap out of it. Uh, I only All read right, the results. So let me let me pull up results so I can remember what the hell happened. I I can pull up the results if you need me to. Yeah, do that. But right. um, so. Uh, firstly, I want to say, though, um, it's, uh, I thought that, I'm, I'm, I'm happy they actually did have Demon Battle at the show. I was happy for that, yes. Yeah. I didn't know that that was, that was the story going in, so I was like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, the results were as follows. Liv Morgan, uh, def oh, one thing we forgot to mention. Big E is WWE Champion. Yeah. Yeah, Big E cashed in his money in the bank, which he won back in July, I believe. I believe he won at Money in the Bank. Yeah, so. yeah. He won the he won it and then he cashed in on an episode of Raw a little bit after like I think the month the Raw after or the or the like the Somewhere the the there. other one uh the af uh, after that uh on Bobby Lashley and uh yeah, that's that fucking awesome. Okay, so just wanted to throw that out because I don't know why I forgot about that, which I'm, yeah. which sucks because I'm legitimately happy he's champion. Okay, so yes. Liv Morgan defeated Carmella in the pre-show match. Um, the most interesting part about this was Liv Morgan's gear because it's DX inspired. That's about it. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, the New Day taking on Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, and Omos. Here's a, here's a, here's a weird statement. Did you notice that AJ was the only white guy in this match? Holy shit, you're right. <laughs> he's he's just the only white guy. I it's mean, like, okay. It's, it's, uh, glad for I'm happy for diversity, but fuck. I guess like yeah. this is a great match too. Yeah, like, yeah. New Day, New Day. I mean, it's awesome. a it's a six Omos man tag. It's a six man tag featuring fucking awesome walkers. So and yeah. like, I I knew the finish from a mile away. Like AJ Styles is gonna. Pull some shit, and Bobby Lashley's gonna get pissed, and they're gonna mess it up. It's like, yeah. okay. Which I think is what they were setting up, because they probably want to set up, like, a, a Lashley versus AJ feud of some kind, I think. So, the New Day defeated them. And then that, it was... The thing is that it's weird, because th that's the WWE champion right there. Yeah. In a tag match at the beginning of the show. Well, okay. I think it was because, like, no, I, I don't want to say it's because... This is why do this is why Big E is the WWE champion is weird, because like he's usually a tag team guy. Like yeah, like like Kofi is the is the singles guy when it comes to the New Day. But like Big E is now the champion. My only question is when are they gonna give Xavier Woods a chance? But anyway, the I'm willing to bet King of the Ring was recently announced for next uh, week's SmackDown for October eighth SmackDown. So who knows? We might get a chance there. Okay, so okay, then it was nice. uh, Street Profits taking on the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, which they retained um, their belts. Yeah, I I, I want to I want to spoil everything for you guys right now. Um, no belts change on this pay per view. Yeah. yeah, it was a very it felt like a C level show from what I, mean, that's, I what, tell. that's what Extreme Rules is when they don't commit to the Extreme Rules aspect. Yeah, because only one match was actually Extreme Rules themed. Yeah. It's like, okay, 
So, yeah, that happened. Um, so, yeah, but, and, like, I'm ha- I'm glad these two are being shown off, but the thing is, is, like, I feel like they've been fighting for fucking ever. So you kind of lose some of the magic of, like, them I mean, fighting. I that's the, that's the other problem with the, with the bloodline and all this other shit. It's like, okay, Roman Reigns has been champion for, like, what, 400 days now? At least? Yeah. And, and that's Uso's great. I lo- And, forever. like, the thing is, Roman as champion is great, but you need to have more variety in matches. Because I feel like what? he's been... Well, like, where are the good guys? Where are the good guys who can actually win? Yeah. We're, we're relying on Brock Lesnar at this point. Although it could... Me? Although, granted, the draft is hap- did recently happen. And I, there, was a cha- there was a particular draft pick that might make sense. But we'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. So, the Usos retain their belts. Charlotte Flair... Uh, defeated Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship, which uh, uh, with, with the fucking doll thing, and then uh, it was really like, weird, because okay, apparently I, at the end of it, like, Alexa Bliss was just holding the doll, and I think an effect was supposed to happen with, like, her she mouth. She was supposed to have, like, like foamy at the mouth that didn't exactly work. Yeah, um, so it was just, just very stupid. weird. But, like, okay, I get the doll thing, but god damn it. Some, okay, I get the whole, oh, they don't like hometown hero shit. Just, somebody needed to win on this fucking pay-per-view, and it wasn't Charlotte Flair. Why did she need to win? Because she's Charlotte Flair. She, <sighs> she's female John Cena. That's what I always say when it comes to Charlotte Flair. Uh, God. Okay, triple threat for the United States title. Jeff Hardy taking on Sheamus, uh, Jeff Hardy versus Sheamus, and then champion Damian Priest. Awesome match. First yes. first match I've seen of Davian Priest, he's amazing. Yeah, he. Uh, I think he used to be known in like the Indies as Punishment Martinez, I believe that's what his name was. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, So and like he was fucking great. And I'm glad he's finally away from the whole Miz and John Morrison feud that's been continued, that went from like January to uh, June, I think it was. Um, and like, uh, the other thing I want to know is, weren't Weren't Ricochet and Umberto fighting for this belt? Yeah, I think so. I think they were. How did we get to Jeff Hardy and Damian Priest as champion? I have no idea. Uh, Okay. Sheamus as this, like, uh, scaredy guy is fun. Because Sheamus is neat. Yeah. He's, I would say, he's one of the most underrated walkers of of, WWE in the past ten years. Is like I mean, he's like underrated, kind of doesn't work because he's been WWE champion a couple times. Yeah, so but like, like, well, both reigns really like well remembered though. Uh, no. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I would say that because like, you know, like those. It's yeah, he is he was a former world champion, but the thing is, is like those won't really. When people talk about those reigns, they don't really speak of them. I mean, does, I think to be a good champion. He has to get past this uh, simple sleazy Irishman stick. Uh, maybe I don't know. I mean, mm. I don't know. I think a, I think a face turn might help him eventually. He has been faced before, and I think it can work. Okay, mm. so then Next. the SmackDown Women's t- um, Title match: Bianca Belair taking on Becky Lynch. For well, and I told you, yeah, no title change. Because bullshit. Because at the end, Sasha Banks comes out, and she fucking causes a DQ at a show Yay. called Extreme Rules, implying rules will be extreme, and therefore, you know, at no. Least at no. uncensored back in, w- back in WCW, when they just blatantly broke the rules, the commentators said, "Well, it's Extreme Rules, or it's it's uncensored. Like fuck it." Yeah, at nope. least they... Nope, rules, yeah. damn it. Yeah. I, I like... Oh, uh, yes, the DQ rules, so extreme. I mean, the thing, I mean... Uh, I've been saying I mean a lot, but I mean, a, tri- a triple threat between Banks, uh, Lynch, and Belayle would be really good. But, like, also, I really hope... I I think Becky's supposed to be heel, right? Uh, yes. They're doing, like, a, like a cowardly Steve Austin thing right now. Oh, so, like, his thing from the invasion. Pretty much. Okay. But, yeah. Like, Bianca's like, come on, give me, give me a title shot. And she's like, nah. Yeah. Runs away. Which, 
honestly yeah. is probably the smallest thing because like it, yeah fuck it okay so then we have the the main event the demon Finn Balor taking on the tribal chief Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship in an extreme rules match you know i love the demon but is covering your face in black paint a good idea I, are you thinking it's Has a black face thing? This? Well, he covers the lips too, so it's not quite that. But does anyone ever say anything about that to him? Uh, like, no. Well, the thing is, is that like I wouldn't say it because like it, it wouldn't be blackface. We, we, because we the know thing the is, point. Like, come on. Yeah. No. Because the thing is, is that like if it was a blackface, then Finn would be talking like fucking. Finn would be talking like, like a goddamn. Well, no, not racist, but okay. I, yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean, I think I just, I just decided to point that yeah, out. I mean, I, I, I don't think demon. it's the demon's you know, fun. Yeah, it, it's a fun character, and thankfully not blackface. Um, yeah. we've had a ton of blackface things in wrestling, like the mm. fucking fucking when X Pac was fucking that Mark Henry parody when the DX yeah. thing, and he was like remember, Fat Albert, remember Roddy Piper. Oh. Okay. Anyway, so okay, this yeah. match. This match was, from what I've heard, it was good, and like it Some had cool. this really cool moment where Finn Balor, Finn, where like the music was playing, and Finn Balor was kicking ass, but then God interfered. Yeah. Just like, just like, oh, I'm about to do the the move, rope break. What? What? And then Roman what? pins him, and then looks up at the sky and goes like, "Thanks, pal." <laughs> Are we going to have a tag match? With Roman Reigns and and God versus Finn Balor and and like Satan, what? <laughs> Come on, God, get jiggy with it. <laughs> oh God, but oh. I think my favorite moment of this match though was the giant Kendo stick thing though. Oh yeah, it was like that was hilarious. So that's like when you were a kid and you would attach all the Malkus to the other Malkus to be a lightsaber. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got a Kindle stick. Yeah, well, I got five Kindle sticks, bitch. Take that. Oh, uh, <laughs> nah, God. So, stupid, stupid f finish aside, was it a good match? Yes, it was a very good match. It was, it was a great Extreme Rules match. Thankfully, on Extreme Rules, there was a good Extreme Rules match. Great. That's that's good to know. Okay, so we're done. So, that's what's so, been going yeah, on that... with WWE. Yeah. I think we've we're good with uh, AEW. What else do we have to talk about in the world of wrestling? Draft. What? Oh yeah, the draft. Okay, so last the the day after we're recording this is the smack is the was the SmackDown draft. It was like the one half of it because uh, yeah. they do the other half uh, other half on Wrong. Monday. Uh, so the the picks are as such for SmackDown. It goes. Universal Champion Roman Reigns, no the shit. Raw Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, meaning uh, I guess Charlotte will likely lose the Raw title at another show. Uh, so, Becky Two Belts again? Uh, it's weird because you and me were talking about that the other day. <laughs> I think it would be cool. Yeah, Honestly. so. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. What? Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. Triple threat. Bianca wins both titles. Yeah, that would be fucking awesome. Okay. Fuck it. Just do it. Drew McIntyre goes to SmackDown, who I think might actually face Roman Reigns for the uh, title. That would That'll be probably work, yeah. yeah. New Day is Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, which sucks because Big E just shifted brands to be WWE champion, and now they're broken up again. Unless they shift... Uh, unless they, for some reason, want to... Put Big E on SmackDown, but then you would have a two world champions on one show, which would probably not well, like, happen. Given that the New Day is a three-man team, you can still have New Day tags, but have Big E be on Raw as like the as the champion. Yeah, still, like maybe they're trying to push for a singles run with this. Maybe, maybe. I I, so I hope so. Happy Colbin and Madcap Moss. That's Riddick Moss, for those who don't know. Happy Colbin, yeah. by the way, best fucking gimmick of the year. It's like, stupid, wait, it, but I like, like he's it. He's happy now? He's not like an asshole? Instead of being... So, like, he went from asshole, Col asshole King Colbin, and then he was poor as shit 
Corbin, who f had a fucking chuck, because, like, it, it, the whole thing was, like, he had bad luck, and, like, he would cut, he would, he had a, he cut a promo about, like, how he had to fucking chuck a can of, <laughs> of soup, just tried to get it open, but then he spilled it on his short. Uh, yeah, and I then he went, and then after SummerSlam, he went to Vegas, and he got a bunch of money, and now he's happy, Corbin. Oh. It's stupid, okay. but I like it. Okay. Hit Row, yes. uh, was then, uh, drafted. Hit Row is the faction from NXT, which includes the NXT North American champion, Isaiah Scott, Top Dollar, Ashley Feed, Adonis, and B-Fab. I think that's really good for SmackDown, because... They what probably... are they going to do about the NXT title? Well, we've had situations where the NXT tag champions appeal on... Like, I know when the War Eaters appealed on, SMA on uh, I think, Raw, they would later drop the belts of the Street Profits on NXT. So I think likely what's going to happen is they're just going to... Isaiah's just going to drop the belt to somebody on NXT at, like, the next takeover or something. Which will probably be, oh, maybe he'll drop it at, uh, I think, the probably, I hope they're gonna do Halloween Havoc this year like they did last year. Hmm. Uh, Naomi was drafted to SmackDown as well, and then Jeff Hardy, who's coming back to SmackDown after, like, three years, I think it was. He was last on SmackDown back when he was U.S. champion. Yeah, but he can have a chance at that IC title if he wants. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, WWE champion. It could be that. Uh, I mean, Universal champion. Yeah, you know, he could work like that. So, cool. for Raw, they picked WWE Champion Big E, Balanca Belleo, Raw Tag Team Champions, OK Bro, Edge... Okay, 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 oh, okay, okay, so, so Bianca's going to Raw, but the Raw Champion's going to SmackDown? WWE's booking is stupid, just roll with it. Okay, um, <laughs> the, it, are, are they going to take the belt off of... Charlotte? Like, I what? hope so. Well, like, this is what happens when you make the belt actually show exclusive. Like, it doesn't make any... I want one draft where they just take it and go, okay, SmackDown Women's Champion, go to Raw. Raw Women's Champion, go to SmackDown. Fuck it. They did that, <laughs> they did that last year with the tag what? titles. <laughs> God damn it. They did that last year with the tag titles. The Street Profits were Raw Tag Team Champions, and they went to SmackDown, and New Day were SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and they went to Raw. And then, in a backstage promo, they literally just traded the championships. In my opinion... Don't write this. In my opinion... In my opinion, like, when there was a draft, if a champion switches to... Switches brands and they're brand exclusive champions, that that title should immediately be vacated. Because that's what they did with Bobby Lashley when he well, like, moved from ECW to Raw. They vacated his belt. Well, it's like, why why do we need the draft? Just stay on the shows you're on. Why do we need this? Uh, well, it's nice to have variety. That's, I guess... What Just switch shows! Who the fuck cares? Okay, so... Then Edge was drafted to Raw... Women's you know, tag like that card card rule yeah. shit back in twenty nineteen. Oh, I fucking hate that. Raw oh WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Ray Ripley and Nikki Ash. I forgot they were a thing. The and, the women's um, tag titles just have not panned out well because it sucks because we no, all wanted not. them but they just they don't they don't do anything with them really. Uh, first of all, here's an idea: make more actual women tag teams. That'll work. That like, will. Ray Ripley and Nikki. Who, how? Why? Is it because they're both Scottish? What? I think it's just because it's something. It's like the odd couple thing or whatever. Mm, I need to watch more Raw. Uh. Keith Bearcat Lee. By the way, that name is stupid, but it's... Why, is, but it, why okay. is he being called Bearcat? Okay, it, it's stupid, but it actually makes sense because it's a reference to... I forgot this wrestler, but his name is like Bearcat something. And he was a wrestler from like the 50s who tried to take down segregation or something. Uh, yeah. And so, like, it actually is a nice reference, and also because they're repackaging Keithley as, like, this huge, unstoppable monster, like, babyface monster, which, you know, at least gives him something to do. I'm just happy he's being used. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he did stuff in NXT, didn't he? He did. He did. He uh, put on, he was NXT North American champion, he put on some of the best fucking matches of all time there, and he won the NXT title. They actually, from uh, Adam Cole. 
uh, Keith, uh, Ray Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio were then uh, drafted to Raw, and then are Austin Theory champions? was also drafted to Raw. Are they tag team champions? No, they are not. They were uh, they were just a tag team. I mean, they're probably the closest thing to a neat tag team we have. Yeah. So, so, so nothing really happened. What happened to the Usos? The Usos, I think they're still on SmackDown. But the thing is, is that they haven't been... We still have Monday's episode of Raw until, ah, for, yes. to wait. So we're going to have to wait until that comes around to see when they start uh, doing... St- to see if, like, it's going to be um, that... I mean, the most annoying thing is just how they're treating the women's division right now. Like, I think it's just their division stupid. is so fucking thin. The point where, like... I mean, it's thin, but it also has actual stars, unlike AEW. But, yeah. yeah. Which, AEW has a similar issue. It's just more so the fact that they they actually have a good roster, but they just don't know how to book it well when it comes to women's matches. I mean, for starters, who who is Britt Baker even feuding with? Britt Baker, uh, I think it was a it was it was a she's fe- currently feuding with Ruby Soho. And uh, question: Where the fuck is Nyla Rose? She is uh, tied in a three-way feud between her, Jade Cargill, and Thunder Rosa. Okay. Um. Anyone else think? They might need either another title or a different champion. Well, I know the well. They, they do have that thing with the NWA. Also, a better title belt, anyway. Yeah, I mean, what I hope is that maybe if we're lucky, we get a knockouts like a. Uh, the I think Impact is holding like a knockouts invitational tournament. And I hope that means we might get some AEW versus Impact stuff so, when it comes so to the women. Impact is still on that knockout shit, huh? Yeah, I mean, they actually they they I mean, they have a really good you, women's you division just, actually. You can't just call them women's wrestlers. I I guess so. <laughs> like WWE got rid of the whole diva shit. Eh, I don't know. It's it's weird. I'm I'm fine with it. It's just like come yeah. on. But I mean, okay. hopefully we get that. So well, uh, that, that's that's, that's basically everything that's happened. Uh, uh, thoughts, predictions for Crown Jewel? It's gonna suck. Anyway. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. We, since we're here, we might as well fucking do it. But I'm gonna say I'm not watching it. I'm never gonna watch a fucking Saudi show ever because the Saudi shows suck. And also, there's only two matches announced for it. I think one of the earliest pay per views I watched was a Saudi show. Jesus. I know watching the Goldberg very first one, and then I just stopped watching them. They on out. So the only two matches that I announced are Reigns versus Lesnar and Lynch versus Baleo versus Sasha Banks. I mean, uh, does does me watching on Peacock give them more money than me? Than like the person going to it in rehab, or does it give them less money? It probably gives them as it probably just gives them money because you have the advertisements that play that pay on stream that play on streams, and then also like the uh, the the overall viewership and just paying for a monthly fee. So it's probably yeah, gonna be the, yeah. At the end of the day, I probably won't even watch it. I'm not even gonna watch it because like. I don't want to bother with crap with Saudi Arabia shows. They suck usually. Like occasionally you get a good match, but also like I'm not watching a show because the WWE paid uh, got some like good old fashioned blood money. Ah uh, yes. Um, also, I'm, are they still doing the shirts bullshit? Um, I'm not sure because they didn't do watch. a Saudi Arabia show last year because they couldn't travel. Well, no shit, but. I get the feeling they're still going to do, be doing the shirts bullshit. Yeah, it might be. So, uh, let's... Now we're done talking about wrestling. I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. Let's move on to the world of tokusatsu. What is going yes. on? In What's going on in this other thing that has bright colors and crazy fights? So, firstly, let's get the big elephant out of the room. We're going to talk about uh, a really weird... Not weird... 
more so disappointing thing that happened with Common Rider recently. So, back, uh, so, as you know, those who've been keeping on Tokusatsu, Common Rider Sable ended a while ago. And, of course, then, uh, usually around this time, they have the crossover movie with Sentai, and then, or they have, like, Common Rider movie, whatever it is, and then the next Rider usually debuts as, like, a cameo. And mm -hmm. so, and then information started coming out of this new Rider, Common Rider of Levi's. It's meant to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Common Rider, and uh, a lot of people were really excited, myself included. And then, information started to come out of one of the main actors. Now, his, now, uh, this actor, uh, he plays, I believe, Common Rider of Vice. Or, He's uh, a secondary, yes. Yeah, whoever the secondary writer is, because it's uh, kind of like a... It's a Deno situation where it involves like demons or something or whatever, and like, and like. Yeah, it is. It is. It's less of a Deno thing and more like an O's thing. Yeah, I guess. So it basically it involves like this shady organization, and then with stamps and stuff that carry like the previous common writers. Also, Minoru Suzuki was apparently in the first episode. So I'm actually realizing how much this concept sounds a lot like O's, but anyway. Yeah. So um. But that happened. But anyways, so what happened was the secondary writer, uh, his, his name, yeah, actor, it was found out that he actually did blackface. And that's widely known, apparently. Because you go on his Instagram and there's photos of him in full-ass blackface. Red lips and everything. And you know, there, are, there are some things that are, that are cool about Japan, and there are some things you realize aren't cool about Japan. I think this is, like, a constant problem in Japan. Because, like, I remember back when, like, Pokemon started airing in the 90s, there was ah, that yes, whole that. episode with, like, Jinx and how the whole design was just oh, blackface. You, yeah, Jinx and uh, Mr. Popo. Yeah, we know. Yeah. So I there was that, and, about... like, you could make the... And, like, you... I don't think you can... And, like, the thing is, is that... I don't think you could make the argument that Japan doesn't care or Japan doesn't have that much experience with black people. At the end of the day, it, it's still a shitty thing to do. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. Japan's not... The pe people in Japan aren't fucking idiots. They know what's going around the world. They know the shit uh, black people have to deal with. So the fact that this dude openly just did that shit is yeah. just disgusting and the fact Toei didn't care about anything also is disgusting. Um, and we got, and it kind of got to the point where, like, they couldn't reschedule things. So we just have to deal with this person being in I mean, an entire season. Like, at least we don't have to look at him because he's just a voice. Like, at least we don't have to look at him. That is true. That is true. I'm probably not going to watch it because I have trouble keeping up with... Talk yeah, I'm not gonna. I wasn't gonna watch it regardless, but like this definitely turned me off. And also the themes of the show and kind of the look of it, because like I like Vice or Revice. I like Revice. Vice, yeah, it's cool Not so much. Yeah. Also, it, it, also hover bike, but. Mm. Yeah, I like, like the stamp. Real... I I do like the stamps thing, and I like the colors for Revice, but. Fuck. I don't hell. like. I don't like the fucking dinosaur bullshit again. Cause this, this is like the sixth Totosatsu thing to have dinosaurs in it. Like, Jesus Christ. So, it just sucks that's what happened. And the weird thing is, um, you know the board dude from uh, Zenkaijo? The evil yes. board dude that works for the uh, villain? Yes. He yeah. actually got recasted midway for the season. Because yeah. his actor, um, uh, it was something involving his wife. I think he would found out he was cheating his wife, and so they got a replacement for him Me. which is why he was voiceless in one episode mm. so i mean me speaking I, but, of zen treasure <laughs> but i don't think they're gonna do that for this show because Probably. you already have all the information out and you already yeah. have so like it's gonna be just yeah so speaking of zen treasure i i have an odd observation that i don't know if anyone else has had about this show what is it um i already told you this but where the fuck is dr red I think they're gonna save him for, like, like, probably for, like, whenever the huge Zenkai- whenever the Zenkaijo movie is. 
I mean, okay. But That's my guess I mean, because like Ian, they only really the beginning, they only so. really bring Akaret in for unless your name is Gokaijo, they only really brought him in for anniversary specials, like things especially tied to anniversary. Not like this is an well, anniversary season. Well, by that I mean like anniversary movies, like the whole. I know they did that with I think uh, a special with um. He showed up in Bokenger, didn't he? Yeah, the uh, he that's his first appearance, and then he showed up in showed up at Gokaijo. He had a major role there, and he also appeared in Zuojo, I believe. Yes, that was the in a uh, team up special. Anyway, so that's that's just like okay, it's weird. Um, but right. yeah, it's it's just um, you know. But uh, I've heard Zenkaiju has been going pretty well. I ha- I've, I'm w- really behind on it. I'm like eight episodes behind. But uh, Mav has been keeping up with it as of late. He's yes, so a good friend, a good friend, Mav. He, I, he's been telling me about it, and he's he's been, he's been texting me about how he has he's he's been hyperfixating on it. Yes. Um. Some some news. Uh, a little bit of spoilers for American Tokusatsu, if you will. Um. Lord Zed is back. Yes. Yes. Uh, Dino, what is it? Uh, what's Fury. the name of it? Uh, fuck, I forgot the name of Fury. it. Dino Fury, thank you. It's coming on Netflix on the 15th, right? Uh, the episode's already out, but I think it's it's still going. With more yeah, because I me- I saw something from the official Power Rangers like Instagram page, and it was like so it's a weird second slow burn on Netflix. The second time. half drops on the 15th of October, so that's pretty cool. I think that might actually get me to watch uh, it because I, mean, I want to watch it. But the thing is, is that I uh, am watching other things like Thirty Rock uh, and Seinfeld, which just came on Netflix recently. Thirty Rock and Seinfeld. I'm rewatching them. It's been a while you, since I've watched both. Are you kidding me right now? Yes. No, I'm not fucking kidding you. <laughs> I okay. love those shows. Okay. Um. So, but I. You know, I Seinfeld and Revis have something in common. <laughs> Kramer, Kramer, you can't say those words, Kramer! <laughs> He's like, what's wrong with this side of town? Don't say it, Kramer. <laughs> uh, okay, but... Anyway. So, I mean, like, it, it, it's, um... I'm glad they're moving to Netflix, because that gives me a more accessible way than going on Nickelodeon's website and watching those shitty ads. Or, you know, going to... going to Daily Motion <laughs> With the... with the horrible whips. Yeah. Um, so, and, uh, also, also, one thing that was really historic about the the show is apparently Izzy, uh, that, that's her name, the, the Green Ranger. Yeah. Didn't she, uh, her character came out as gay, right? I need to research this now. Fuck, because I on. remember seeing a clip where, uh, she was kissing another girl, and I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Mm. Mm. Take notes, Common Rider. This is how you're woke, goddammit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> I think that's really great and also really impressive because the show's been going on for nearly 40 years and we haven't had a gay character ever. Yeah, um, isn't this series the first one with a black Sith Ranger? Like, in 2021? Yeah. Are you I think it's kidding been, me? Yeah, it's... it's I'm... So, it, look, in just three... Three, four... Th- like, three... In, like, just two shows, Hasbro's already dispa- displayed a lot of respect and knowledge on how to do a Power Ranger season. Than the entire fucking Neo Saban era that combined. That is very true. You know, like I don't like Beast Morphers, but I can applaud it for being at least passable. I and really, really liked. Good. I really liked the ending to Beast Morphers because I uh, managed to, you know, watch a review of it and like. I, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. Sp- I'm gonna spoil it because we. Because like I know the the audience probably watches History of Power Rangers and. Even then, yeah. the show is like a year and a half old. But anyways, the ending has... Ven- so, for context, in Power Rangers RPM, Vengex, mm-hmm. the main villain, it was mm-hmm. hinted at the very end that Vengex was going to a torn, but they mm-hmm. never renewed the season, the series for a season two. But well, then... Yeah, what ha- Power Rangers season. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, what happened was, at the end of... Uh, at the end of uh, one of the episodes in... In uh, the second season of Beast Morphers... Uh, Vengex, uh, made himself, he was, uh, actually disguised as another villain. Wait, he was, he was Evox, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And his act, the actual voice actor for, uh, uh, for fucking Vengex, uh, was, 
voicing Evox the entire time, but he was just credited under a different name. Uh-huh. Which has to be probably a really clever way of bringing back old lore from that I most mean, people probably forgot about. If there's one thing that Hasbro is showing they're good at, it's bringing back old villains now. Because... Yes, because you have Lord Zed, you have, uh, I think Godal tried making, made an appearance in the season before that. Uh, was... it was his son or something? Or like some like... sort of alternate version of him, because I don't think they could get the thing of Goldar or something, I don't know. Yeah, but that's so fucking cool. Also, Hasbro ha- makes really goddamn good toys. I got the, Oh, uh, yes they do. I made, I got the, uh... The in space Black Ranger figure from mm-hmm. GameStop. It's really good, actually. Yeah. It's not I mean, SH Figure Arts quality, but like for twenty bucks. I mean, it's... The only thing I don't like about the Lightning Collection stuff is that they can't quite hold their arms down. They kind of like have a bit of a you know like a gorilla arm pose. Yeah. But it's still good. Yeah. Like I have I have a uh, bridge Z no no sky no. See, I have, I have green and pink, God damn it, Green and pink. I want to someday get, like, a full SPD collection. We'll they haven't done yellow yet, which is pissing me off. Yeah. Just do yellow. But, uh, yeah. So, congrats, Beast Morphers. You're really fucking good. And I... Not Beast Morphers. Uh, we, Dino, uh... With Beast Morphers, we gotta, we gotta talk about that dinosaur episode, though. But... Dino Fury, so good. Dino Fury, I'm definitely so gonna fucking good. watch that show when it comes on, when, whenever I get the time. I mean, hey, they brought they brought Mick or Boom back. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot they constantly like bring back older cast, older like um, well I say older, but it's been like five years since Ninja Steel. But they bring yeah. back other characters, and like that's how you fucking do. That's how you honor the fucking lore of a show. You like bring back. Uh, people on occasion in more than just anniversary seasons. And yeah, I mean, I feel like he can get a bit tiring. But honestly, this is a great way to, like, introduce fans. Like, new... Because I bet a lot of the people that are watching this season are, like, new fans. Or people who haven't watched in a while because they're like, oh, it's under new management. Let's see what it's like. So they get to see all the stuff they missed out. That's a really good way to bring... To, Bringing new fans into uh, other shows, into like the other series. Yeah, you always you always have to think about well, okay, what what if a kid is watching Power Rangers for the first time? We need to we need to like help him out. We need to make him a fan. You know. What the only the thing they this? could do to make this better is if they actually had the fucking older seasons on a on a streaming platform. Okay, 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 okay. Hasbro, whoever owns the other seasons. Pay them money and put them on Netflix again because they were already on fucking Netflix. No, they have. Why are they off Netflix? They have the rights for um, the Power Ranger seasons, I'm pretty sure. Why are they not on Netflix? And uh, you can still buy the Shout Factory DVDs, like <sighs> the individual DVDs, but you can't buy the box sets. Because <sighs> the thing is, is that I know they originally released them in like those huge box sets and then they released the seasons individually on DVD. As like a like, whole thing. Like why why is it easier to watch Die Ranger than it is the rest of Mighty Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? I think why it's because that, why is that I don't know. They I my guess is they're gonna work something out with them because they already have they already have the entire the second half of the show on Netflix soon. So like they obviously have they're obviously gonna plan something. Yeah. Maybe if we're lucky we'll get Bashed Rydle on uh, fucking Ooh. Netflix. Come on, come on, come on! You know you want to do it, to tell me. You know you, know you, you want, want to bring in weird Furby. You know you want to bring in fucking mashed right, mashed decade as an adaptation. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! If there was Kamen Rider Dragon Knight on a naturally accessible streaming service, fuck yeah. Yeah. Dragon Knight was good. God Dragon Knight was good. The only problem is it aired on the CW. And, like, that was a network that nobody cared about then. Because, like, now... care about it now? No, well... Aside from, like, Arrow and shit? It has the Riverdale fans and the Supernatural fans. (laughs) Isn't Supernatural done? Yeah, it's done. But, like, it reruns Arrow on there. And it was airing there for, like, seven years for new episodes. The only time I watch the CW is when they play Big Bang Theory, okay? Well, and also when they do, uh... 
Whose line is it anyways? Uh, we want to... I have I have HBO Max for that. Okay? But uh, it's like yeah, but like but uh, they should they probably should have put Dragon Knight on like fucking I don't know Disney Channel not that Disney Channel um I don't know like Nickelodeon maybe I guess they could have put it on. Like, like oh, it wasn't Saban who was doing this. It was yeah it was. It was um, a different company. Let me look up who made full who made the show. It was definitely a smaller company. Yeah. It might have been Four Kids. Ew. I think Four Kids themselves produced it. Ew. It was... I'm loading up the Wikipedia page right now. <laughs> it, uh... It was... Okay, so the... It was produced by the Toei Company and Adnus Entertainment, who Grr. really only made this show. Hey. So, I think it's probably... So they probably... The CW was probably the only thing they could get, like, a hands of. Yeah. So, which, I mean, is fine, at least we got the show, but I still feel like they should have, um, put it on, like, well, the show aired in 2000 and, uh, yeah, 2009, so... 2009? Ryuji came out in 2003, right? Yeah, it, it well, the, the good thing about, it, it's weird, because, like, there was a good, like, that's almost a decade, uh, in difference, but also, like... The good like, thing when about this was coming out, decade was coming out. Okay? Yeah, but I mean, at least the good thing is that I think Common Rider is film is used recording with film instead of digital, so you are able to like remaster it. So it was and more like, easy just, to put on TV. Just one day, can some company? I don't care if it's Hasbro. I don't care if it's any American company. Just ask Toei nicely. Please let us make a Power Rangers style common writer show. I think we're Please. getting closer to that because, Please. like, I know ha Shout Factory, they are releasing subs of Ryuki and Zero One with Ryuki Ooh. subs coming in November, actually. Ooh. So, watch Ryuki. Come we watch, might. Watch Highlander. Wait. So, I mean, fucking maybe. We might get a chance. Maybe at the come very on. least we'll get, like, I mean, I don't know if Shout Factory does any original programming, but, like,. Come on, man. The, the money's on the table. It really is. The money's on the table and you're wasting it. And, okay, so in other news, uh, the guy who does uh, the Shin movies, the Shin movies Yes, Hideki Japan, Anno, who also Hideki produced Hideki Evangelion Anno. and the uh, Shin Godzilla and Shin Ultraman, which should be coming out soon, is making Shin Kamen Rider, which technically already exists. But that was, um, that was a kind of a diff- it was a different one. It was Shin Kamen Rider Prologue. Oh. Yeah. Uh... You know, the one with the weird, like, actual bug guy? Which looks really impressive, but from what I've heard, shit, it, it's just kind of an okay-ish movie. Like, a little bit dis on the disappointing side. Yeah. But, I saw- it was on- they released a teaser, which had pretty much just, um- the suit for Common Rider, Ichigo, riding around, recreating the intro, and I think some text appeared on the screen, and then, like, some images were shown of, like, the cast, and if this means we get, like, apparently from what I've heard, it was, like, it was inspired by, like, the events of the, uh, the earthquake disaster that happened in Japan in 2011, you know, the one with the nuclear waste just causing an entire fucking place to shut down. Wasn't that the thing with Shin Godzilla too? Yeah, a similar thing. Hideki Yano really likes uh, injecting disasters into his media. Um, but mm. I hope, I mean, I think that's what I've heard about it. Well, but... you know, art imitates life. You know, yeah, you know. yeah. But I mean, I hope this kind of lies into the more whole aspects of Kamen Rider and like, because like, I feel like you that know, could be a uh... really interesting thing to explore, especially with Hideki Anno being on board for it. I mean, you know, the, the thing with Japan that you sometimes forget is, like, it's a much smaller country. Yeah. So, like, it can be a lot more devastated by a lot less things. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 and also, they have, like, a slightly new design for the Cyclone, which is the bike uh, Ichigo uses. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, uh, it actually looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we have no wood yet on uh, Common Rider Black Sun, though. Hmm. Which is uh, the... I think it's a... It's kind of like uh, in the style of Common Rider Amazons, both Common Rider Black. Oh. Yeah. But um, if... But uh, I mean, I think hopefully this movie... I, I hope it's going to be really good. Because, like, I have a feeling... That, like, Hideki Anno can do a lot of great things, and this should definitely be one of them. I mean, he's, a, he's an amazing director with great themes. He's he's interesting. Yeah. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get an English release. I know Shin Godzilla got an English release, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I think Shin Ultraman might get an English release when that eventually gets released, because they pushed it back due to COVID. But if this gets an English release somehow, even if it's just like a limited like Fathom Events run, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna watch it. I don't care if it's only gonna be me and like some other real doe in the. I will travel to different uh, states to see a screening of this. <laughs> okay. Or just fucking right. rent it on Amazon. I don't know. <laughs> because the thing is, they're putting the Common Rider W anime on Funimation's streaming service. So, like, we might get a chance to actually, you know, see this. Really? Yeah. It's on Funimation. Oh, it's going to be on that. Funimation's Ooh. site. Ooh, so I have that. Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ironic. They have the sequel series, but they don't have the actual series available. Mm -hmm. Not just on Funimation's. Like, I mean, in general, there's no legal way to watch W. Paul from the first two episodes. I mean... Is it is it Toei sometimes doing, uh, just on YouTube free shit? Yeah, that's what I mean. Because like they only, but it's only the first two episodes they ever release. Lame. It's never, like, the full I mean, season. Can't you can't you do what Super Rai is doing? Yeah, is? and like simulcast the episodes. But I think it's only because just now, they are going for a uh, only only just now they adapted to the streaming mentality. Of, mm. uh, of, uh, fucking... So W uh, is coming to Funimation. The sequel series, uh, Futo Files, I think that's what it's called. Oh, that's lame. Damn it. Oh, it wait, it's based anime, off of the it? manga of the same name. Oh, right, that's an anime. Okay. Yeah. And also, from what I've, from what I've seen, I'm re-watching the trailer. It, it looks like it's just gonna, like, recreate... Or do, like, a retelling of the first few episodes, because you have the Spider-Man monster from the original, uh, from the first episode making an appearance uh, yes. and doing some flippy shit. And he looks kind of terrifying. It's, like, a kind of a more robotic thing, which fits because, you know, Comrade is supposed to be a cyborg and shit. Yeah. But I'm really excited for this. If this means we get, like, a really good attempt at bringing Common Rider to the West, or like a more gritty Common Rider that doesn't take itself too seriously, I think we're gonna get a really good film. Yeah. Alright, so I think that's I think that's it. Do we have anything else we need to show? That's about all we have for news, pretty much. Alright. Um, in, in some slightly related news, uh, uh, Battle for the Grid has gotten a new pack. Um, Ooh. Oh yeah! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Poissandra is there. Sick. That's great. Uh, Rita Raposa, I also know, is there. And it's the frog! Yeah, yeah, um, the Zero from Mega Man 4. <laughs> from Mega Man X4. <laughs> no. Cause, no, no, that's because John Young Bosch does voice Zero in, uh... uh yeah. yeah, but he's also Adam, so, uh. <laughs> Yeah. So, Adam, yeah, he's... That's great. I love that. Um, I, I don't play that much of Battle for the Grid. I'm gonna probably get myself the, uh... I think they re-released the game a while ago with, like, all the DLC included for, like, $30. So mm. I'll get that for Switch. Yep. Alright, so that's about everything we can talk about. Yeah. Oh, oh, unrelated, but circling back to wrestling. Um, I yeah. recently got myself Wrestling Empire, which is a video game. Um, mm -hmm. It's, like, a, it's based on, like, the old N64 wrestling games. And it's pretty fun. Because the second day in my career mode, I fucking died. Oh, wow. I got dropped onto a bunch of the ladders uh, from... Uh, I, uh, Pac dropped me head first into a bunch of ladders. And I was wow. pretty fucked up for the rest of the match. And then the news comes and I died. 
and then in another match, I injured Austin Aries to the point where he was paralyzed. Um, and then later on in the year, in that same session, uh, nudes of my character were leaked. This is the um, best fucking in, game of the year. <laughs> in gaming news, are we getting another WWE game? We all, we all. 2K22 is releasing in March. Yeah, they typically go for a, they typically go for like a fall release, but I think because of the all the cuts WWE have WWE has been doing to the company, um, constantly releasing yeah. wrestlers seemingly, yeah. they probably had to delay release somehow. Well, I'm sure it won't be a buggy mess. Yeah, yeah, but um, so, so that's I mean, we need to do one of these where we play like 2K21 and just have fun with it. We could, we could. Anyways, so I think that's that's it for yeah, the Yeah, we've evening. talked about everything in wrestling and Tokyo we care to talk about, so we will we will move on. Yeah. So uh, see you guys next time, whenever that is. Mm -hmm. uh, signing out. I'm Jacob. I'm Justin. And we just talked about the last month's wrestling and Tokusatsu news.